Hey, Rob with the Mongrel Bees again. I uh, just want to cover how I do my swarm traps. This is going to be a real quick one. Uh, this actually had a big wasp nest in it. Um, the European hornets. And so you can see those here. Um, they actually, the biggest one I ever got was probably about the size of a volleyball. So what I'll end up doing is if I get the European hornets in there, I'll spin the front around. I like these spin prints reducers a lot. So I'll, I'll spin the front to these holes. I'll pour in like maybe a quarter to a half a cup of rubbing alcohol and keep it closed like that. Just leave it out the next day. I'll come out, it'll be full of dead wasps. It's kind of messy and smells, but um, it's not that bad. Uh, this one, actually, I just put tape over it. And because I picked this up at the end of the season, I put it in storage and then uh, just picked it up and they're all dead this year. It's full of, had some wax moth larva uh, actually just a little bit mostly they just chew through everything so simple way that I look I do these is one frame of drawn comb I do not put um, drawn comb in it that has honey in it um, you'll end up since I put most of mine out where people watch them for me uh, I've asked people to actually host these things so I've got about 25 spots around Richmond where people will allow me to hang them up in their driveways or at the end of the driveway so they can see it every day so they know when to call me right away if something happens if i were to put honey in there i could get other insects and bumblebees and i'd have a bunch of false positives i'd have people calling me all the time saying that the bees are there when actually they're just robbing out some honey that was in there also my concern is with the hive beetles i could get some and usually hive beetles are going after protein like the pollen source anyway but my concern there would be that I'd have some slime honey, and then there's no way I'd catch any bees in, the, in that case. So it's just empty black drawn comb, nothing in it. I try to get uh, drawn comb with, without even pollen in it, and that'll cut down actually on the wax moths as well. Um, <laughs> I got a bee actually looking at my camera. Uh, so it's one frame of drawn comb, and then five more bees. These are just the frames I showed before, and so those go in there. One of the things I do. And I just take my hive tool, I open up the jar, I grab some out. I've already put it on this one, so I put about like a, a tablespoon to two tablespoons on there. And I just smear it on the top, so it's just smeared up here. One important thing is I put some nails here on the frame rests, and that keeps these from moving too much. It holds them a little tighter. In the future, I'll actually glue in some wood blocks. The nails sometimes bend, uh, sometimes these fall over in my truck. And that's part of the reason I put them in there is I don't want the, all the comb to get wonky if they fall over in the truck and then I hang it up there. So I put the nails in there to, to restrict the movement. In the future, I'll probably get them real tight. And then, so you'll want to add that in both, all four corners. And then on the lid, uh, you want these to be tight because you definitely don't want a situation where the bees crawl out here. So this needs to be, I think mine only has a 1 8 inch and then it fits on on tight, so it's one eighth inch gap, for a little bit of air movement, not much at all. And then it fits on tight. I put one screw here and one here in the back. I don't put four in there just because I don't feel like I need to. It's just, just to hold the top on so the bees don't push it out. And then uh, on the front, I love these things. I'm switching over to all metal ones just because number one, um, <laughs> mainly because they don't warp. These plastic ones after a couple of years won't tend to warp. and so you know, I've got a stainless screw here, but I also have a stainless pan head screw down here, and that just holds it there. I had situations where if it warped too much and this thing lifted up, the bees were coming out the side. And so I uh, didn't really like that when I picked them up at night. So adding that little screw there keeps it closed. And then finally, um, I get this entrance to about the size of my, I've got big fingers. So uh, I want it to be big enough for a, a drone bee to easily get in there but I'm hoping that there's gonna be a magic size that I can find that prevents the queen of the European hornets, which are wasps, from getting in here and building these out. I usually lose about uh, one in 12 of these hives. So maybe two or three of these every year, I get those European hornets in there. And once they're in there, the bees aren't gonna move in. So if, the, if that queen sets up shop, then this, this swarm trap's dead for me until I switch it out. And usually, uh, the people that are watching these for me do not notice one or two because it takes a while for that, that queen to build up, um, build up a colony. 
And so they're not gonna see a whole lot of bees flying like they would seeing a swarm move in. So anyway, that's that's it for me. Uh, also, just as a, a point of order from vo a volume standpoint, um, if you think about it, there's the top bar of that frame here. There's that empty space that you have here. So we've got all this empty space here, and then you have empty space below. And this is all creating volume for that new hive to move into. I really, really don't recommend a five frame nuke for this. Uh, it, they don't catch bees very well at all. I never caught a, a swarm in the five frame nukes I tried when I was first starting to do this. And then also in the south, there are uh, some studies that show that the Africanized swarms are okay with five frame nukes uh, versus the European. So if you want to catch Africanized bees in the south, um, you can you can do your five frame nukes. I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, there can be some hassle there if you don't have fencing and all the, the other stuff that goes along with that. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, if you guys have any questions, if there are certain things that you would like to see a video on, please just put them in the comments. I do have a lot of stuff that I'm doing uh, throughout this summer. And uh, if there's something special that you want to see, uh, I might even do grafting. I know the cloak board method can be really tricky for some folks. Um, i trying to think of anything else that's kind of tough out there. Um, I'm going to modify some of my Freeman beetle trays and some of my uh, new um, bottom boards. So uh, I might add something there. But if there was something specific, somebody wanted a, a question, answer, or anything like that, uh, just let me know. Thanks. Bye.